All right, now we're going to move on to the transform tab. That's where we can really get get some cra crazy things going here. Okay, let's take a look first at our data set before we do that. So we have the data view, as you know, and that's the how the raw data of these four forty two hundred and somewhat variables. We also have the variable view. This is a variable. This is a view of all of the variables uh, in the in the data set. And you'll notice that for every row in the variable view, it's represented by a column in the data view. We did that a little bit last time, but it's important to understand the relationship here between these between these variables. Okay? So let's say you wanted to create a new variable. You do compute variable and you want it to be a calculation. First of all, you must give it a name. So I'm just going to call this. I'm just going to call this change. There are some. The name variable has some restrictions. You can't. Um, you can't have spaces, and there's certain types of characters and certain types of words you can't use. Uh, I think change will probably be okay here. So let's say we wanted to take a look at. Um, the difference between baseline systolic blood pressure, so I'm going to go baseline systolic, and the last systolic. So it's literally a function, one number minus the other. Pretty easy. Now you'll notice in my <coughs> variable view, we have uh, a new variable. In row 18, it's called change. It's a numeric variable. It's scale. Uh, we can even give it a label if we wanted to. We don't have to. And now if you click on the variable view, let's see if I can figure out how to. So if you'll notice the very far right column, the one that says change, and you can see that I've created that calculation between those numbers. And we won't go back and forth to verify it, but trust me that it created, the, I had a, a good math there. So that's how you do that. All right, so let's try a couple a couple of others that tend to stump people. In others, what if you wanted to recode? There's two ways to recode, and this will come up quite a bit, uh, frankly, when you get to your dissertation, and maybe you're using a secondary data source, and the data isn't exactly in the format you were hoping it would be in. So uh, you can use recode into the same variables or recode into different variables. If you want to do recode into the same variable, so let's say we wanted to take one of these blood pressure readings. We're going to put that up there. We're going to do old and new values. And let's say this is a continuous variable. So let's say if it's in a range here of and this is a systolic. So let's say if it's in a range of, say, 20, you know, on the lower valve through 140. Okay, so that's that's my range. Okay, and for those, I want to give it a value. I want to give those a value of zero for some reason. Don't ask me why I would do that. This is just for demonstration purposes. The one thing to remember, too, is, yeah, let's do it that way. OK, so you click Continue, click OK, and now, OK. So take a look in my variable now, my last systolic. You notice I have a bunch of zeros. Those zeros weren't there before. Those zeros are there because of the, the recoding that I just did. So my recoding was correct, and so basically any variable outside of that middle range and of course that's just one of the example it can be a range uh, or it can be an if it's an exact match or it can be a greater than or less than but that's how you do a recode into the same variable the last thing I'm going to show you tonight is a recode into a different variable and the reason that I'm going to show you that is that we use that um, especially in a function called logistic regression and it's used in coursework. It's all, it will also be used in your dissertation if you do logistic regression. So before I do that, take a look over at the gender column, the, the gender variable. 
And you'll notice that I have a bunch of ones and twos. And what do those ones and twos represent? If I go to my gender data set here, well, uh, as I would expect, one equals male and two equals female. That's cool. That works in the data set. In a, in a function like logistic regression, the math only works from zero to one. It doesn't know how to do one to two, or two to three, or three to four. It must be a zero to one. So what you do, and this is called creating a dummy variable, what you can do is you can create, you can recode into a different variable. So we're going to try it here. We're going to pull this gender variable here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give it, we're going to do one for male. Don't have to give it a label, but I kind of like to do that. You're going to click the change. And again, you've got the same old and new values. So remember that males were one. And this may seem a little crazy, but so we're going to do one equals, so a one, the old value, equals one, the new value. And what we're going to do is we're going to also do a, all other values are going to equal zero. We're going to add that. And we're going to click Continue. And we're going to click OK. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the same thing for the females. I'm going to transform, recode into different variables. It's always a good idea just to reset everything, just to start fresh. So gender. So this time we're going to do female. Give it a label. Change, pull the new values. Now you have to remember, females were twos. Okay, so what you have to do here now is two in the old value equals a one. I'm going to add that, and for all other values, again, we're going to give that a zero. I know most of you are like probably. Like glazed over at this point, going, what in the heck is he doing? Well, you're just going to have to trust me that at some point in your statistics life, you may actually want to do this function. But check this out. This is very cool. So notice, you can see we have a male and a female variable. And if you look real closely, you'll see that for every time the male is a zero, the female is a one. And every time that the male is a one, the female is a zero. So we've now created a variable of ones and zeros that can be used in a logistic regression uh, statistical analysis. How cool.